Alright guys, coming to you in glorious 480p. Okay, we have Chris Slater. He is a purple belt going up against a mean looking black belt. So Chris is in the blue gi with the purple belt on. Okay, i um, very curious how this is going to go. Remember, I don't put much stock in belts. I think most black belts suck. I think that people don't train like real athletes, so... While we're just chilling here, guys, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Maybe leave a comment. Maybe hit the notification bell. It helps me and Bird grow the channel a lot, and we really appreciate the fuck out of everyone that's supporting us. So keep doing awesome shit. All right, let's get into this fucking commentary. What is going on with this stand-up? None of that had to happen, okay? So right away, okay, we're not really in a stance. I mean, you're kind of bending your knees a little bit, and you're kind of low. Your hands are just pawing out, though. You're just, like, in that that mindset that we have to touch each other before the match can really start. You could just be keeping your elbows low, getting lower, and crowding him a little bit, and you could just shoot on the guy, you know? You don't have to wait. He's like, look at how planted his lead foot is. It's so planted right now that if you were to cross shot on this, or you get a spin out shot on this, he wouldn't be able to take it off the mat fast enough to stop you. Okay, but instead we reach out and grab the guy, and right away, as soon as we got the grip, we did nothing. <laughs> we just, just tied up with a guy who's a black belt, okay, and just let him kind of choose the pace. But that was a good guard pull. Okay, there was a lot that happened really, really well there. Uh, that's going to get sketchy if you're not careful. Oh, jeez. Oh, boy. Okay, you're out. Um, that didn't have to happen that way. I, I really like that you went deep daily heave on him and you tried to knock him over and bear and bolo him. Uh, we should have committed more to the bear and bolo, I think and ignored the footlock, because if he's trying to straight angle, if he's trying to toe hold me when I'm already on his back, I'm gonna choke him unconscious. And then once this sequence plays out, I'm gonna go back and watch that again. Actually, I'm gonna do it right now. I think your guard pull was pretty decent. Um, you got your hips underneath the guy, and that's what lets you go De La Hiva right away. And then you didn't fuck around from De La Hiva. You just went, and I love to see that, because that is how you're gonna beat someone that might be technically more skilled than you in, in terms of overall jujitsu ability. You know, he's if the more time you give a black belt to get their frames and everything correct, the more likely they are gonna do that. So don't give them that time. Go right away. Okay. So he instantly starts going for your foot a little bit. Right here you're still good. Like I probably would just keep rolling back under him instead of trying to come... Like, right now, you, you just gave up on the back chase right there, and that's actually what let him bend your toe in. Because you decided to come up instead of re-roll back through and keep chasing his back. And now everything that happens here is almost a result of that. I wouldn't have turned back through right there either. Like, in this spot right here, you, you, when you're reaching for his neck like that and you're on his body and everything, you can probably pressure out of this. Okay, I can't feel it, but it looks like you would get out of this and threaten... Um, enough of a back chase or enough of a choke that he'll have to abandon the footlock attempt. So, and now it's just tight. Now you do have to get out for real. So let's go back to where we were. Okay, I, I don't like chilling in these positions. Um, I don't think it's usually a good plan. Here, really, really pressure that shit down. Take that and pressure it this way. Like, start walking this foot up and around this way. Um... Turning like that is probably not going to work out if the guy pulls your leg through. Um, if your foot slips out, you're good, and you're going to end up getting side control pretty quick. But I, I don't know if you're going to be able to get that out with how that guy's holding it. I mean, if it works, though, it works. Okay, now you are going to get out. He is just like, giving up on this. He's just clamping. So everything you're doing upper body right now is going to be important because you know that foot's coming out. Okay, so you got to think... It's going to get out, and what am I going to do next? I'm going to fucking smash this black belt from side control, and I'm going to put some the pressure of, you know, Panda Express God down on top of him. Uh, actually, I think you need to be a little bit worried about getting rolled right now, actually. The, guy, the way the guy is starting to line his hips up underneath you, um, if he just rotates his hips under you at the same time as he pulls down, he's probably going to, he might be able to get on top. I don't know, I can't see how connected your foot is to your hips. Um, I thought he was clamping a little bit higher. So digging for underhooks right now would be a good idea. Either underhook's gonna let you start to sink your chest in and then you're gonna be able to start using your right leg to kick your leg free here. It's just such an awkward position to be in. There you go, that's good underhook. Good, use that though, pressure. Pressure in, pressure in. Yep, yep, exactly what that dude is saying. Yes, there we go. And this is why belts don't fucking matter, guys. We have a purple belt who just completely passed the, the guard of a black belt in a competition. 
Okay, use that underhook. Cling to it with two hands and start threatening Neon Belly. When the guys turn into you like that, instead of letting them trap anything and do anything, if you have that underhook, just go straight Neon Belly because you can start threatening Mount or the spinning armbar. And at the very least, he doesn't get to get you in a quarter guard again. I can't see if he has it, but I suspect he does because he's no longer turning in. Um, did we How the fuck did we lose that underhook? Okay, we stopped We stopped holding on it right there. Once we got the pass, we let him underhook us, and I thought you still had that underhook. Um, yeah, still probably going to go Neon Belly to prevent him from wrestling up, you know, but uh, he does have the underhook on us now, so that is a little bit of a problem. I would make sure I'm not on this knee right now, no matter what's going on. I'd probably be on that foot posted, um, because I'm assuming he has you in quarter guard. Uh, no... Probably not. I think he's going to get up and they'll give him a sweep right there. Yep. Get back up. Get back up. Don't give up the sweep at this point. Maybe you let a good black belt back on top of you and he <clears throat> and he gets the sweep points. You know, like if he passes you, he just wins. I agree. Don't get DQ'd for reaping. Now he's going to fucking try to toe hold you and pull your leg across for you, isn't he? That leg being stuck like that is super awkward. It's kind of that top saddle position, but we're not really on top anymore. There we go. Good job wrestling up. Now back up a little. Back up a little. You're already getting a good position. He's smashing his own frame for you right now. You can start putting a lot of pressure onto that knee shield right now. That right there is a good job feeding it. Okay, now you can come back and grab the, the gi kind of anywhere on his pants and start working your way around the outside. With that is your, your he clubbing head forward pressure. Yep, getting that underhook is huge. You gotta get off this knee, though. Okay, being on this knee right now is equalizing the weight between both knees and your arm, and you really need all of your weight on the knee that's in the knee shield right now. Okay, so you need to post this foot out, and the fact that you have such a good underhook on the guy means you can kind of start coming across and clearing that knee shield with hip pressure. Okay, the other thing you can do is use the two-on-one underhook position to kind of fall towards his head a little bit, clear the knee shield, come back up into a knee slice, okay? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's in the the uh, free BGJ Fanatics knee slice instruction that we put out. You can check it out for free, you know. So, always little things you can improve on. Good. I don't like you trying to cut out like this. Uh, he should be able to punish you for that. There's so much space right there for him to get his, uh, his, his quarter guard back, like, tighter, almost like a full half guard. And then usually even if you do get past their legs when you're going that far out, you don't get the pass, okay, unless your pressure is perfect. Yep, I was about to say, use that to start clearing that foot. Open it with that. Okay, take your toes over there on that other side and point them. Okay, you need to. that's why you need to get your knee back on the mat the whole time, by the way. That is like your number one priority when you're in this knee slice finishing position is keep this fucking knee loaded up and lined up underneath you. Right there, every time you take it off the mat, you're risking getting rolled, and then you have to react by posting your arms and he re-underhooks you, or you have to react by... Uh, adjusting somewhere that's going to give something up and you see that's why we get brought back into half guard because we didn't uh play the knee slice finish correctly you're winning though so as long as you don't get swept you're winning actually even i think even if you do get swept you're winning so right now a lot of time oh uh-oh oh no not right at the very end i think you're good well, actually, I don't know if you're good now. This shit's getting sketchy. Oh, no. Five. Oh, he's doing the thing, too, where they try to, like, look like they're squeezing it super hard for that advantage, even though it doesn't matter. All right, let's go back and analyze this a little bit. So, when we got swept in that deep half, you know, obviously, there's stuff we can do right now to prevent this. I want to get his knees turned back to the other side. He, he's in deep half with a lockdown, too. This is kind of awkward. Um... Scooching your hips back towards me is really good. If you reach back and kind of grab his his left leg, grab it by the knee, you can almost kind of sit to your hip and keep him down on his back. And then if he tries to turn into you, you can start reaching for that underhook instead. The whole time shimmying and fixing this position, getting him turned back more into the middle. Um, other things you can start working on, but I don't think you'll be able to do it with the way this guy's positioning this arm. is like bringing that leg over. Okay, he actually just full-on electric chair swept you with a, a you know deep half electric chair, but... Still, um, it was preventable. Not easily, but you can see how just giving that up is what led to this. And this kind of looks like it hurts. Yes, 
Yes, <laughs> yes, Chris. Oh, dude, they sh that wh whoever was recording that did you a disservice, man. They should have recorded you getting your arm raised versus a black belt. So um, the stand-up, I think, needs a lot of work and needs a lot more focus on what am I actually doing, why am I doing any of this stuff standing, why am I reaching out and grabbing that grip if I don't have something ready to do off of it, okay? And then, uh, again, kind of reaching uh, slowly gives him a ton of time to react. You know, it's just like the, it's a match. You guys, are, you guys are already going. We don't have to ever let him grab us. I don't want him to grab me, so... That would have been better. I think your guard pull was really good, and I think the way you went straight to that sweep was really good. I think you didn't have enough confidence in your Barambolo game uh, to pull that off against his toehold game, though, and that's what made it all get sketchy because you decided you needed to come up instead of rolling back under and chasing his back and really punishing him for that, okay? And then um, you ended up getting a pass off of it, which was good, and I think you should have probably got sweep points off that too, right? Unless you guys were just both on the map for too long and the ref didn't score it. So you should be up by about five there. Um, I think you did a good job passing him. Not a great job keeping that underhook, which uh, you know kind of made things more difficult later on. Okay, whereas if we had kept that underhook, things wouldn't have ever got sketchy. Here, you did a really good job not letting him come back up. You recognized when you just had to take your leg out, and then you had to wrestle back up. So that was great. Um, that neat. This this whole deep half scenario happened because you didn't know what to do in a knee slice well enough. Okay. Knee slice entry and knee slice finishes are different, okay? I'm never trying to finish a knee slice in one burst. I'm always just happy getting down with an underhook, all of my weight on my knee, my foot planted, and nobody gets away, okay? So uh, I would advise going and um, watching some of my instructional on that in order to kind of tighten that game up because that would have uh, prevented you from getting pulled in the deep half and swept and attempted knee barred. You know, you can see how things can go downhill so fast from little mistakes, okay? Especially against uh, more skilled opponents like uh, the guy's a black belt, you know. But hey, guess who just fucking beat a black belt in a tournament as a purple belt, man? Good shit. So that was fun. Uh, guys, if you want me to comment on one of your matches like this, go ahead and check out our Patreon and our Discord. There should be links in the description below. And like always, guys, eat your Panda Express. Okay, clearly this guy has been eating his Panda Express, and that's why he just beat a black belt. So good fucking job. Bye, have a great time. Alright guys, if you've ever wondered how do I manage to pull off some of the ridiculous bullshit that I do, go ahead and check out our instructionals on bgjfanatics.com. We don't hold any information back when we make an instructional. It's everything we actually do. We cover everything from gi and no gi buzzsaw, how to wrestle your way up to victory, how to assert dominance from back control, even to what sweet nothings you should whisper while you're on their back. And don't forget we have what's probably the most successful knee slice system in the world just sitting up there for free, so you should absolutely go check that out. We also have a Patreon account called Wilty Brothers BJJ, where you can help me and Bird as we try to take over the world with our non-toxicity, alright? We currently have five tiers on offer, and those tiers offer things from uh, early access to videos, to rolling commentaries of your own, to perks in the Discord channel if you guys want to jump in. We have like 700 people in there right now. Absolutely should check it out if you just want to get more involved with me and Bird. And don't forget to check out our Instagram at andrewwilty46 for some of those sweet, not quite YouTube-friendly content. Currently, I'm at about 42,000 subscribers, and I think Gordon Ryan has 400,000, so uh... Yeah, let's get to work on that. And lastly, don't forget to check out our affiliate channel, Pedago Submission Fighting. They offer some fucking seriously good, high quality production content, almost like the Daisy Fresh documentary you watched on Flow Grappling, okay? Professional editing, lots of heart and soul put into this. If you guys aren't watching that channel already, what the fuck are you doing with your lives? And guys, like always, don't forget to eat your fucking Panda Express.